So right now we need, in addition to um, the feature line toolbar, um, we want um, the grading layout toolbar. It has a bunch of tools, and gradings, once again, are connected um, to a grading group. And because this was the last one uh, I made, it'll show up automatically. Um, we want to make sure that we're in the right site and putting things into uh, the right grading group. And you'll see I have one surface currently in my drawing, so it automatically selected that. But I could, uh, if I have multiple surfaces, which I'll have in a bit, um, I can therefore, uh, inside the grading object, change what my targets are if I need different targets. And we have a set of tools, and I can pick a set of standard sets. Um, we're showing all the sets right now, right? And what we're looking for is uh, an unlock tool. That's what the U stand for. Uh, this one would be 10 feet to 2 percent, typical around a building pad tool. And um, since it's unlocked, I'm able to change it. You'll notice here that I cannot change it to a slope tool, so it is locked as a grade tool, which helps me. Um, uh, identify a, what the tool is useful for and how I can use it. And I'm going to uh, use the create grading tool. And it's going to ask me for a beast. And it wants, notice, it wants a feature line. And what side I want to go to, we'll go out this way. And now it's saying, you want to apply this to the entire, this tool to the entire length of this alignment-like uh, feature line. And I'm going to say yes for now, because that's exactly what I want to do. And you'll see I get a distance pick. How far out do I want to go? So I can uh, determine by simply picking, or I can say I want to, you know, get an approximation, and I definitely want to make sure that um, uh, from the center here, I'm out beyond um, this point to the south uh, east. So we'll go 325 feet that way. And it asked for what my grade was. Well, my grade existing that way uh, was 1.6, so I want a positive. Um, 1.6 to match that, and it creates the grading. I'm going to go the other way now, and we're going to pick the same grading. So one of the cool things here about gradings is that you can use the same feature line to apply multiple tools uh, to um, uh, multiple sections uh, of the alignment effectively or the feature line in multiple directions and they can be different. So in a sense, we're, we can design a big V-ditch here if we want to this way. Um, we're going to pick this way. Uh, we want to apply it to the whole length in this case again. And uh, my distance here, um, we want to make sure we sort of get out uh, beyond the end of our street here. So um, we'll pick two, type in 250. And this time, I want to go a negative distance, so we'll go negative 1.6 to match our existing cross slope and flatten out the whole thing into a single plane. And so now it's created both gradings, and I'm just going to enter out of the command. And for the moment, we're going to close the grading uh, layout toolbar, and uh, we have this one each one of these objects is a feature line. That's a new feature line from which I could create another one. Um, we're going to uh, go at over here and look at the properties of the grading group. And you'll see uh, there are my two gradings, both using the same tools. And I would like to make a surface out of this. And so I'll turn on automatic. It uses my grading group as the name, and I'm happy with that. I like to change what it's going to look like, and we'll pick a style that does half foot contours and fives, because otherwise we wouldn't see too many, and say OK for what it looks like. And it's going to generate that surface. Uh, the testulation says how often does it sample out, um, and every 10 feet is good for this one. 
uh, though if I have lots of curves, I definitely want to change that value. Um, and I end up with a surface. And we can see um, I end up with tooltips. So if I leave my mouse sitting here for a second, you'll see I have my existing grade and um, my parking lot grade. Um, and they're fairly closely matched, but not exactly, which is what we would expect. Right, so as the contours hump, there'll be bigger differences. Right. Okay, and so now we have this surface that we can map other things to, and that's the sole purpose of creating this. And to do so, uh, just remind everybody, we made a grading group, uh, we made a feature line. I like to edit my feature line here, and um, I actually want to uh, take some dirt out of this whole parking lot area, so I want that top surface uh, drop down. So effectively, I want um, the I could make it the bottom surface using this technique or the top surface. I'm saying I want to be six inches down so I can take the dirt out of the parking lot in my final design and use it to do landscaping and build up the pad area for the building as well. So um, we need to edit that feature line again. And uh, it's still reachable and grabbable, and there it is. right? And uh, we can uh, right click on it and use raise and lower here. Notice I can also flip it around so it acts exactly like an alignment. I uh, wish it was an alignment all by itself, but it isn't. All right, so we can uh, raise and lower this thing, and we're going to go down. Um, let's go down half a foot. Happens to be my fault, so we'll just go. We're going to go down half a foot anyway. Okay, and you'll notice that it remaps um, a whole bunch of things. Uh, events occur as I change the surface. Um, so what I did is took all the point locations from all those tessellations and that's why they appear here. Right? And uh, we just lowered the surface. So now if I hop out, our um, surface is lower than the existing ground, which is exactly what I wanted to do. 